When we were spearing on Lacoparle, some of our fish decoys were handcrafted by Kurt Soini, who lives on the Minnesota River in Granite Falls. We stopped by his studio to see an award-winning craftsman at work. Kurt Soini has been carving decoys for over 30 years. His wide variety of fish, waterfowl, shorebirds, and wild creatures have won numerous awards around Minnesota and the Upper Midwest. When Kurt retired from his job at UPS about five years ago, he built a studio where he spends countless hours carving and painting his creations. I spend a lot of time in here. I come in here just about every day. And it might only be two or three hours, or it might be five, six. I do uh, fish decoys. I do uh, shorebirds, ducks, geese, uh, swans. Um, I have a lot of shorebirds. Shorebirds are uh, a lot of fun. Um, I've made raccoons and otters and turtles and submarines and airplanes and <laughs> make a lot of uh, frogs. Uh, yeah, it's just something different. My submarine was the first place in Purim and uh, I had a uh, P-51 that got third. So yeah, some of the oddball stuff is kind of fun. All of this amazing work started back in 1983 when Kurt was just trying to please his wife. Uh, my wife saw a swan decoy in the uh, catalog and uh, it was about $400 and I didn't have $400 to spend on it. So I thought, well, that doesn't look so tough. I could make one of those. So I tried and it was a little tougher than I thought. And uh, it took me a whole summer and she finally got it the next year on her birthday. So. When Kurt started making decoys, he primarily crafted waterfowl, such as ducks and swans. In recent years, he's been carving more shorebirds and fish. When we stopped by his studio, he showed us how he turns a block of wood into a flashy fishing decoy. This is how the uh, decoy will start out as a block of wood. I'll uh, draw the uh, two views on the, on the block, and then I'll saw it out with the bandsaw. And then after it's cut out on the bandsaw, it looks like this. Uh, this is where I start carving. And I'll use a knife to, uh, to whittle it down and uh, put the details in. Make sure the fins get uh, symmetrical and the same height up. I'll use a, I use a block of wood and my pencil to, uh, to draw a line on each side so that the, uh, the fins will stay in the, on the right plane. It'll come out looking like this. This is ready to, uh, it's got all the detail carved in the head. And uh, this is for uh, top fin on its little walleye. And we got a tail here. And these are just the patterns that uh, just trace them on with a sharpie and then cut them out with the snips. And after I drill holes in the stomach, then uh, I uh, pour my lead in there and then I seal the wood really good because now it's time to uh, see how they swim, see if they sink. The fins here and the uh, tail are turned so that they swim in a circle. I also reinforce the uh, tails. I'll drill holes. Uh, through everything and use, I use toothpicks for pegs and then they're, they're put in with two-part epoxy that's real strong. So it keeps the tail from splitting and you can bend it to make it uh, uh, turn sharper or just adjust it. For swimming you put them in a tank and you jig them and they should, uh, in contest they'll judge them. They want them to float level and when they drop the, drop the jig stick they want them to uh, sink and swim in a circle. And they like them to glide nice and slow. And, uh, when you're in the uh, dark house looking down and you'll give it a little jig and it'll pop it around. It'll swim probably two, three times around the circle and try and attract the northern pike. These are jig sticks. These will, uh, I just cut these out this morning. Uh, the line will be wrapped around here and it'll go through here and, and it'll, you'll jig the decoy up and down or you can use them for fishing too. To help make the jig stick in some of his larger pieces, Kurt uses power tools to supplement the hand carving. This is a uh, Fordham. It's like a uh, Dremel on steroids. 
I use that for roughing out the uh, ducks and uh, bigger stuff. All the, the fish I carve with a knife, but uh, I'll get, uh, I'll put a sanding drum on here now and I'll smooth this all out and then I'll get down to the hand sanding. Um, wear a mask because uh, this is made out of cedar uh, and it's uh, not too good on your lungs. After carving and sanding, the next step is painting, typically with acrylics. To pattern his designs, he draws from photos, then adds his own artistic twist. I don't like to make them real realistic. You know, I, I like to uh, take a little artistic license with the, with the colors and the brightness. And, and I do that too when I make my patterns. I'll, I'll uh, you know, kind of make a caricature. I'll accentuate different parts of the fish. And, I've got a fish here that's been primed. Uh, I put about uh, three or four coats of primer on it. And now I'll, I'll use acrylic paints. It's, uh, so it's all ready to paint. And uh, this is a white fish, so it, it'll be, uh, be whiter on the bottom and, and it'll turn to gray and, and uh, darker on top. And they make everything a little brighter um, than the actual fish. So it, uh, I think it attracts more. And I mix some iridescent and some silver in with this white. So it'll, uh, it'll be a little shiny. And while it's still wet, we'll blend them together. And I'll use my uh, hair dryer to dry it and then I'll keep working uh, the way up. I'll just add darker and darker and blend it into the color below it uh, as I get up in the top. And then I'll make it uh, real dark on the top so it uh, gives a good silhouette so it can be seen by the, seen by the fish. And uh, I don't make it exactly like, a, like the real fish. When he's finished, Kurt will give the decoy four or five coats of polyurethane, so it's sturdy and shiny. Whitefish are popular for spearing, so are walleye, perch, northern, and a generic red and white decoy. They'll last four to five years, but sometimes customers bring them back for a little tune-up. I uh, repair some once in a while. They can, uh, they'll have bite marks in it from the northerns. Um, sometimes the noses will be scuffed up, uh, fins will bend. Um, they don't come loose very often. They're epoxied in there real solid. Um, and, you know, if they use them a lot, they can crack a little bit, but uh, I can usually touch them up for them and get them back in the water again. So. Kurt enters his work in national decoy competitions throughout Minnesota and upper Midwest states and exhibits at art councils throughout the region. He makes most of his sales through word of mouth, and at the annual Western Minnesota Art Meander, where he is a popular stop. About yeah, 2006, I started, decided that it was going to be something I could do when I retired, and started going to more shows, uh, joined the Meander, and uh, yeah, it's been good. Met a lot of people, and uh, it's been a very good hobby.